<laughs> All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio. Hey, we have got a new release of the DigiPi, DigiPi 1.6 Mark II. This is like the ultimate accessory for your amateur radio. You know, you spend a thousand dollars on one of these, and what does it get you? It gets you, you know, yeah, sure, you can do voice modes and talk, and maybe if you're lucky, it'll give you RTTY data mode. But with a $15 Raspberry Pi and the DigiPi SD card image that you put in the Pi, um, that'll open up your radio, and you connect it to your radio over USB, we'll go over that in this case, uh, and it gives you access to every data mode there is. That could be JSA call, FT8, um, all the modes that come with FL Digi, slow scan television, APRS, uh, AX.25, bulletin board, packet, all of that stuff, every mode you can think of. Would be will be available to you on your DigiPi uh, connected to your amateur radio. Instead of going through every mode today, I've got another video for that. We're going to actually go through an installation process for the DigiPi, and we're going to do that this time on KM6 LYW Radio. <laughs> Right. Welcome back. That's right. Extremely low production value here. Uh, we do our own jingles. In fact, if you recognize that jingle, go ahead and put it down in, in, the, uh, in the comments. I, it wasn't perfect. Anyways, uh, let me put the guitar away. Okay, like I said, uh, we are going to build one of these from scratch. So uh, the first place you want to go for this is open a web browser and go to craigerorg slash digipi. I can't really zoom the URL in. It's craigerorg slash digipi. I'll put it down in the, in the, in the description here. Um, and there's, this is everything you need to build the digipi. The, the, the image is here. Um, and again, this is for patrons of KM6 LIW radio video. We've got hundreds of you now. Thank you guys. Um, all of the build instructions are here. The shopping list is here. Um, hardware configuration, software configuration. At a minimum, uh, you need an amateur radio, obviously. You need a Raspberry Pi. I like to use the Pi Zero 02 wireless. Again, this is $15. Uh, I need to come up with an SD card. I don't even get those just about anywhere. Um, optionally, for a few more dollars, you can get one of these cool little displays, you know, so you can see what it's doing. I think it's $12. Sometimes you got to buy them in packs of two. Now, if you don't have a radio with a USB port on the back, uh, you ne we'll need to do a little more engineering. This would be like a dual bander. We need to, we'll need to use the speaker output for the data uh, for the DigiPi and the microphone in for that. And we'll also need to implement a push to talk circuit. So if you have a dual bander like this, you'll need to get uh, additionally uh, an audio board that you can put on top of the Pi. This is an FE Pi. Uh, Bud is making these. These are actually handmade. Uh, Bud, Bud Churchward. Thank, thank you, Bud. Or uh, you can get a... Uh, Audio Injector Zero on Amazon, and you'll need to implement a small push-to-talk circuit, and that includes a 5-cent transistor and a resistor. Uh, it's pretty simple. All of the information you need to, to buy those things, and there's even the wiring diagrams here if you want to build one for a, an old a traditional dual bander. But we're not going to do any wiring here today because we have a ICOM 705 here, which has a USB port on the side. So we do all of our push to talk and all of our audio stuff over this USB cable. It's uh, super duper convenient. All right, so craigerorg slash digipi. We're gonna go to the top. We're gonna click on download and I'm gonna download it to the temp directory. I'm not I'm gonna make, not gonna make you endure the download. I've already got it here. Now that we have a, the digipi in a zip file, um, we can, um, now I, it depends on your operating system and how you unzip this. So. Uh, for Linux, I, I know we weren't going to do any command, sign, command line stuff. Uh, <laughs> for, for Linux, I have a zip file here, and I actually I use the unzip command. Uh, and then it unzips, there's an actual image file. Um, now you need to use, I think there's a program called Etcher. Is it for Windows? I think it's called Etcher. And then once you have the IMG file, you can actually etch the SD card uh, using your SD card reader. Uh, in Linux, just uh, for, if you're using Linux, it's, it would be like disk dupe in file equals digipy uh, to image, and then out file would be slash dev sdg and the block size. You, know, you guys aren't Linux users. Um, that would DD the image to the SD card. But in Windows, you're gonna, you know, if you know how to et burn an SD card, go ahead and look that one up. It's pretty simple. It's basically, if, you, if, you, if you've ever used a Raspberry Pi, you know how to, to dupe a, an SD card from an image. All right, so I actually have that image, brand new image that we just downloaded on this SD card. We're not, I'm not gonna flash it right here and now. Um, and all you do, okay, st stay with me here. All we do is put the SD card image into the Raspberry Pi on the side. 
Uh, since we got the cool little monitor, um, this is this is all the our hardware engineering you got to do this. These these USB you got to use these USB radios are fantastic. Uh, we just smashed the monitor on there. Now I'm going to attach the USB cable. All right, and that goes into let me see if I can get this on the camera. The center port. Get the polarity. Up. You know, it's the right way, the wrong way, and then the right way again. So the USB port's plugged in. And then I'm going to apply power to the USB port on the side. And let's see how this works. Hopefully you guys can see this. Just like that. And then I'm going to turn on the power. And the DigitPi is going to boot up here. Now the boot process takes about, I don't know, a minute or so. So I'm going to pause you guys until it gets to the boot screen. All right, I've unpaused you. This is the boot screen we see. We're at 1.6.2, and it just immediately goes into a, a TNC mode, like for APRS or AX.25, does that automatically. Um, this We can configure this to be on a Wi-Fi network. If we're like doing a summit on the air thing, um, it actually turns into a Wi-Fi hotspot all by itself, and it'll come up on the network as 10.0.0.5. This is all in the instructions. You don't have to remember all that. So it is actually uh, hearing stations. See, I'm, I'm not even on the right uh, <laughs> frequency, but DigiPi is still picking up stations. And uh, we can see with APRS, it's uh, actually downloading stations here over the radio, over the USB cable. Uh, these buttons do stuff. This is kind of new with DigiPi Mark II. I can actually press the upper button and it'll take it out of TNC mode and put it into standby. And when we put it into standby mode, you'll notice it shows the an IP address here. And since we haven't configured the Wi-Fi yet, it's on 10.0.0.5. I don't know if I can make that any less blurry, but that's its IP address. Um, so what we want to do is configure it for our home network. Uh, let's get it on, open our tablet. Remember it said we can do everything using our tablets or Wi-Fi devices. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I've got a tablet here. And I am going to go into the Wi-Fi settings, and you can do this on your mobile phone too, and just kind of hold down the Wi-Fi button. Um, we're going to sit here and wait. Well, eventually we'll see a hotspot called DigiPi, okay? And I'm going to connect to that hotspot over Wi-Fi. You guys are cell phone pros probably. I don't really use cell phones that much. I do like this, this tablet though. So we are now connected to the DigiPi. Now in the field, and when you first boot it, it's always going to be at an address of 10.0.0.5, okay? And if we go there, we see the DigiPi homepage, which shows us all the services that we can run on the DigiPi. But I want you to go down here and click on Wi-Fi at the very bottom. And then uh, this is just like setting up Wi-Fi in any other network. Um, initially in the field, the, the Wi-Fi password is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, lowercase, literally. That's what the pa Wi-Fi password is. Um, so that's what we just used to connect just now. But I'm going to connect it up to my home network. My SSDI ID is triple X. And let me get my, I just have to type this right. <laughs> Let's see if we got it. Now you know my, my Wi-Fi home, home address or password. I'm going to hit submit here. And it says Wi-Fi credentials updated. And I'm going to go ahead and reboot this DigiPi. I'm not going to make you endure that process either. But I click on reboot. And when it reboots, it'll come up on my home network and be a host name called uh, HTTP colon slash slash DigiPi. And we're going to go there and operate the DigiPi. Oh, we'll configure it. All right, so I'm going to pause you guys while this guy is booting, rebooting. Let's see if we can get you down here nice and close. DigiPi is rebooting. Let's take about a minute on a Raspberry Pi uh, Zero Two wireless. All right, I paused you guys for about a minute. That's what it takes to uh, to reboot one of these. There's a lot of services that run on these. In fact, I could probably work on the boot time, make that even less, because we, we this is a pretty slim device here. So it's back into TNC mode by default, and it's still talking on our APRS frequency. So this DigiPi still isn't really configured yet. The only thing we did was got it on our Wi-Fi home network. In fact, when I press the TNC button here, it should show a new address of my Wi-Fi home network, and it does, 192.168.118. Um, most home routers uh, will find it by the name of DigiPi, so I'm gonna minimize my tablet. It's kinda cool to be able to run your, your Android tablet there. So just go to uh, DigiPi, spell it correctly, and then put a slash on there, so it's then become a search. Takes a second to load the page, but this is the management interface for the DigiPi. So you can turn on, off and on all of the different data modes here, and you can display them all, uh, you know, on your 
tablet device over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Um, so now that we've done Wi-Fi, you'll notice down here there's a link called Initialize, and it's in a fancy color here. It's in green, and it says Required in a very stern warning. Enter your call sign and other localization information. So we're going to click on Initialize, and this is where you kind of make DigiPi yours. This is where you put your info. So I want you to put your call sign in here, your WinLink password. I'm not going to give that one away. Your APS password, everyone knows that. Uh, let's go ahead and put your grid square in there. Uh, your latitude. Um, this is new uh, with DigiPi. It, it's, it's a new format. It's much easier to do. So in my case, it would be 38.9119 north. Uh, and my longitude is going to be something like this. You notice all of the values are cached in my browser. And your node password, this is like for your bulletin board system because you're, you're going to be the administrator of your bulletin board. So just put in whatever you want here. Um, I don't know. I'm just putting in test 11. And some new things that are, that are new with DigiPy Mark 2, 1.6 Mark 2, is you can actually use FL Rig with your apps like JS8 Call, uh, um, WSJTX, slow scan television. You can use SL, FL Rig, which kind of gives you a, a view of your radio in a window. It slows you, shows you the SWR power levels. You can totally adjust your radio. In fact, you can do all of this from the other room. Like, you know, you can operate your radio. Uh, you don't have to be in your shack to do FT8. You can actually be in the living room with your XYL getting some good XYL time in, and she won't know the difference. You're actually operating your radio there in the living room. So, uh, hey, you know thinking about it. I'm, I'm trying to take care of you here. Um, I won't tell. You can operate your, do FD8 from the living room over Wi-Fi using this. Okay, so that's our node pass. Um, FL rig we talked about. We can do a large display option. So if you're using like a PC, um, you know, like uh, WSJTX, J8 Call, those will all be larger and more appropriate for a monitor. But if you're just using your phone, uh, don't check large display. Um, or even if you're using a, uh, you know, a or if you're using a really big tablet, you'd check large display. And then for USB connected radios, which is what we have here, um, we need to know our rig number. And in this case, the ICOM 705 is rig number 3085. You can click here and see the rig list. Um, I'm just going to search for 705. And sure enough, here it is. And I see the rig number is 3085, and that's our model. We'll punch that in uh, so the rig control daemon will know what radio we're using. Now, additionally, remember I said in a previous video when we did the Linux kind of for dummies here, we need to know the device file for cat control, and that's the push to talk and frequency change stuff. Now, for the ICOM 705, it's going to be TTY ACM0. I've got that listed right here. And for the ASU 991 and the ICOM 7300, it's going to be TTY USB0, which to me makes Makes more sense. Um, so, and then the last thing here is the baud rate. This is again for cat control. I know these are complicated terms, but usually you go with the defaults, so you're going to be okay. Um, so, for the Yesu 991, I want your baud rate to be 38400. That's the default. Of course, you can change that on the radio if you want. The ICOM 7300, just to be different, is baud rate is 19200. And then the ICOM 705, which is what we're using here today, is going to be something. A third thing that's different, it's going to be 115200. That's a fast baud rate. So actually, I'm not going to change anything. This is already defaulted for the ICOM 705. So actually, if you have a 705, this thing just works out of the box. You basically don't have to mod modify it at all. And then I'm, going to, then once every, I'm happy with all this stuff. Now, remember, you can't really come back and change this because this sprinkles all of these values in to hundreds of configuration files um, you know, behind the scenes. So I can go down here and press Initialize. And my... Raspberry Pi, it says changes applied, and then I'm going to do a reboot to take effect. Um, you don't really need to do a reboot, um, but some apps uh, will we'll, we'll need that. So we're going to go ahead and reboot because that's what it's telling us to do. I'm going to press reboot right here. And we'll see the DigiPi is now, it should go into reboot mode. And it says restarting device. DigiPi will be available, and it shows you the IP address it got. Uh, that's so it's still showing in standby. So the DigiPi is, in fact, rebooting. I'm going to pause you guys because I don't want you to have to endure a reboot. But again, this is about 60 seconds. All right, we have rebooted. Our DigiPi is now localized. That means, or initialized, that means it has all of our personal information in it. So we can now we can start using those apps, and those apps will have our call sign in them. Um, and the radio is properly configured. Uh, DigiPi knows that we're talking to an ICOM 705 now because we filled out this form. So at this point, uh, we can actually click on the word DigiPi up here. It'll take us to the DigiPi service homepage. And it's already in TNC mode, so we can actually start using this. So if you're into APRS, which is what we're doing here, um, on 14439, and I actually have the correct antenna plugged in this time, uh, go ahead and, and pull up your, your Wi-Fi device. And this is where we can just start doing cool stuff. Let me... Uh, minimize this. So like if you want to run, run APRS Droid, and yeah, we can connect to the DigiPi either over Bluetooth or over uh, networking. 
So going to preferences, connection preferences, uh, what do we want to do? So we want to do uh, connection type is going to be TCP IP. You could use Bluetooth serial port protocol, which is pretty cool. See another video for how to pair your phone with this. And then the server is going to be Digipi colon 8001. Okay, and that's where the Digipi is listening for a, a KISS TNC uh, uh, device. Um, and I think that's all you need to know. So now we can go back and go back again, and let's just say start tracking. And we should be connecting, it says connecting to Digipi 8001 on port 8001. It might take a minute. And we are connected, it looks like. It usually says connected, but we are actually receiving packets. So we got the K6FGA, G-Town just made a transmis transmission here. Um, we can actually send our own position, so APRS Droid will use the GPS coordinates on your phone. So let me just do a quick, send a quick beacon here to send position. You'll notice the radio turns red, it transmitted, and we should have gotten repeated. Yeah, we got repeated by a digipeter called G-Town. Of course, we can see all these stations on the map here. Um, I don't know how to zoom in. I'm going to have to, I can use my fingers on the phone. <laughs> and we can see all the stations in our area using APRS Droid. And again, this is happening wirelessly over a tablet. This is a tablet, uh, Android tablet, and we're using APRS Droid. So that's using basically AX.25 and uh, APRS Droid to connect to it. So you can do email. You can do all of these other modes. Um, for Just for the sake of time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fire up WSJTX. So I'm going to click on next to WSJTX, and you'll notice the DigiPi will go into... WSJTX mode. Um, we can see the URL. We want to go there to see the app. So WSJTX is actually running inside the DigiPi on a virtual display. And now to see it, we can uh, click on WSJTX down here and it'll just display what it is doing. Um, what, to make it official, I'm going to put this into uh, 14.074. I'm going to change the antenna. <laughs> just something I always forget to do. Let's plug in the HF antenna since we are on 20 meters. We'll get that plugged in. All right, we are receiving on 20 meters, hopefully, 14074. So here the stations are already rolling in. Um, so this is running inside a web browser and this can just as easily be on your phone if you go to, to DigiPi. So I can go to a web browser here, say reload. And it's actually going to bring up the, con you know, you can control your DigiPi from the web interface here. I don't know if I can do this without too much glare. There you go. And then again, I click on WSJTX FT8 here. And it's going to redirect and display exactly what I'm seeing <laughs> and on my PC. And this is happening on my phone. So it's basically like WSJTX. Um, is an app on your phone or JS8 call. So it, it's really, it isn't fundamentally different than that. So, um, you can see it on the tablet. Now, every this is running in a web browser, which is cool. Um, what we can also do is if uh, to make it a little more ergonomic, and you can install a VNC client. So again, this is my tablet. I have something called VNC Viewer that you can get from Google Play. And I'm going to open that up. And then I'm going to create a connection to DigiPi. And that's going to be on port 5901. It's going to ask you for that. And it's going to ask you for a password as, as well. The password is test11. That's just the password I threw in there to give it a little more security. So uh, we're going to set up a VNC connection using the VNC client here to a host called DigiPi on our home network. Now, if you're out in the field, it's going to be 10.005, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect to that. And here we are with FT8 running on my tablet. Um, I can actually enable transmit since I have a, have a radio antenna hooked up. I don't know what my SGWR is going to be like. So we'll, we'll be transmitting here. And maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll make a contact. <laughs> Every now and then, you know, when I'm demonstrating this, uh, you know, someone will, will will reach out over over this. Uh, there it is. We're transmitting now. Um, you can see the radio turned red, um, and we can see a transmit here on on the waterfall. So this is WSJTX running. Basically, it's running on my piece on it as a almost as if it's an app on my phone. Again, we haven't had to do any command line stuff um, to control it. 
you go back to this web management interface. You can start all of these modes. You can do, we can send and receive email to uh, talk to people on JSA call. We can run FL Digi, which includes a whole bunch of digital modes and it all displays as if it was an app on your phone. It'll even do CW. Uh, one of the modes I like is Packet PSK31. It's keyboard to keyboard stuff. Uh, really simple. Uh, another mode you can use is AX.25 stuff. So if you want to do bulletin boards, things like that. Uh, we can do that here with these AX.25 utilities. Uh, in fact, I could run um, Linpack is something we added with uh, DigiPy 1.6 Mark II. And this will fire up the AX.25 network stack. If one isn't found, it'll start the 1200 baud TNC. Um, I don't know how this is going to work while we're running uh, WSJTX. Oh, no, it, it exited it. That was, that's normal. <laughs> we only run one thing at a time here. I mean, we, and we run one thing at a time. We run it really well. So all memory and all uh, CPU resources are dedicated uh, to the app we're running. So that's Linpack running on uh, keyboard to keyboard stuff running on the DigiPy. And of course, we can do a refresh to see what's running. So I think we covered most of the, I'm going to turn that off. Uh, I think we covered most of, we're not going to do every single mode in this um, every, that, that's possible. Um, go see my other video for DigiPy 1.6. We just wanted to cover the highlights for DigiPy 1.6 Mark II. We built one of these from scratch, uh, from a blank SD card to download the image, insert it in the Raspberry Pi, hook it up to the radio, and then we were doing packet radio operations, uh, you know, and we did uh, WSJTX FT8. There's so much more we can do here, but we don't have time for this. Check out my other videos if you if you want to see how to operate all these modes, but we've got a DigiPi up and running here. And if we take this to the field, um, it'll be just as accessible. Um, it'll come up on 10.0.0.5. You can connect to it over Wi-Fi. Uh, and, and, and do exactly what I just did in the field. So for SOTA operations, this thing is pretty cool. Uh, it's maybe 200, 300 milliamps. Um, there is a battery option for this. This is a wave share battery. Um, so you can just bolt this onto the bottom of your Raspberry Pi and it, and, you know, it literally has a power switch. You can turn it off and on. It's fantastic. And these aren't that expensive, maybe $25. So it's kind of like uh, you know Barbie accessory for accessories for men. Um, it'll do the GPS stuff as well. So it's actually listening to the GPS uh, on that radio automatically and setting the system clock uh, using this GPS satellites because time's really important for frame-based data protocols like uh, JSA call or FT8. All right, that is the DigiPi. Thank you for going over the installation process here. And none of this would be possible. I wouldn't be able to do any of this honestly if it wasn't for. The patrons here okay um I, i'm serious the, the patronage has been overwhelming um if you go out to patreon.com slash km6 lyw radio you get uh, access to con a lot of uh, additional content you'll get access to early releases um you'll get access to the digipi image itself i mean we're just talking we're not talking about a lot of money or anything it's just like just throwing a dollar um that we that way we really know you're passionate about this technology and honestly we've, we've built this community that's really amazing so we've got a discord channel we've got a mailing list um, if you have any problems whatsoever, you know, there's a lot of people there now to help to help support. So, you know, at the top, we've got Fu. Uh, I think you've been with me the longest uh, since day one, literally, since I started making YouTube videos. Thank you, Fu. Uh, Brian, uh, Jake, Jason, Dan, uh, Christopher, Simon, you guys have been with me the longest. I think that's how this is sorted. So people who've been here the longest. Um, going down, we got Claude, Jeffrey, Tony, W2N, that's Mark. Hey, Eddie, Aaron, Bruce. Um, what who BRG? How does BRG stand for? We've got Rocky, uh, Mihai. Uh, Mihai is the person who showed me about the battery stuff. Um, actually, thank you for that phone conversation. This was cool. The the Raspberry Pi battery <laughs> that works really well. Um, so you don't need a, you know a complicated you know cell phone backup battery. I don't even have one here. It just reduces the amount of wires you need. Um, we've got Paul, Theodore, Bradley, Howard, James, Henry. Domingo, uh, I'm not going to even try to say your last name. We got Fred, W1FRD. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Martin, John, Scott, Scott. We got plenty of Scots. D what do we got? DO6, DOC. Uh, what is that? A Dutch call sign? Thank you for the support. Uh, Scott, Fran, uh, Soren, Todd, Ronald. This list is getting longer and longer. At some point, I'm not going to be able to read all of your names, but at least I can display them on the screen here. So this has been another KM6 LYW radio production, and I really want you to check out DigiPi 1.6 Mark II. We really want to make amateur radio accessible uh, to everyone. You don't need to be a software engineer to do data modes on your radio. And hey, if we're going to make this ham radio appealing to kids, man, we've got to make it available 
on their cell phones. You know, how, when was the last time you saw a kid actually talking on their phone? You know, they're, for the same reason, they're not going to talk on their radio. So if we can get these data modes working with our amateur radios as if they were cell phone apps, I think we're going to attract a lot of people uh, to the amateur radio uh, uh, community. All right, this has been KM6LYW Radio. My name is Craig, and uh, I'm clear. <laughs>